Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video will be about flying the PW5 and doing what's called a low altitude release. Part of your training will be doing low altitude releases as low as 200 feet above the ground and it's all part of your training. So if you have an interest in flying just look up texassoaring.org for more information. Our club has three PW5s and they make a perfect cross-country trainer. It's very light and easy to maneuver on the ground. The maximum gross weight is 660 pounds. That includes the pilot. The PW has about a 44 foot wingspan and a glide ratio of about 32 to 1. The stall speed is about 30 miles an hour. But typically we fly between 38 and say 70 miles per hour. The never exceed speed is 140 miles an hour. Okay, let's prepare for takeoff. Checklist, controls, free, radio on 123.3, altimeter set at 660. No flaps, trim is set, air brakes, open, close, lock, brake, feels good. I'll give him a thumbs up. Canopy's locked. Let's do a radio check. 3-5 Yankee, this is PW, you read? All right, thank you, 3-5 Yankee. Okay, so we have radio contact. We got a good crosswind too, we got to pay attention to. We'll be off the ground before the tow plane, so we got to keep it right on the deck, maybe about five feet above the runway, and allow the tow plane to accelerate and also get off the ground. At this point, we stay very focused on the tow plane. We don't want any distractions. Here are the numbers that we use for tow failures. At or below 200 feet, land straight ahead, maybe a little bit to the left or to the right. If the rope fails between 200 feet and 600 feet, we can land downwind. Tow failures above 600 feet, we can do what's called an abbreviated pattern, which just simply means we may not do all an exact base final and downwind, but the objective is we get back to the runway safely or safe landing. There are times when you can do a low altitude release, find that thermal you flew through and go on up to altitude do a low altitude release trying to find that thermal. The important part is that you have a way out in case you don't find it. One problem with a low altitude release looking for that thermal, you may not find it so it doesn't give you a lot of time to work it or try to continue up in altitude. Now I'm trying to locate that thermal and I'm not having much luck with it. I get a little bit on one side but not enough so again, I'm still working my way toward the runway, back to TSA if all fails. So at this point I got one eyeball looking at the airport and another eyeball trying to fly. At this point, I can still make TSA either landing downwind or an abbreviated pattern. I'm still in a search pattern trying to find that thermal again, but it looks like I'm not having much luck. And here's some of the numbers we use when we're flying. If you're 3,000 feet above the ground, you want a general landing area. If you're 2,000 feet above the ground, you want a Pacific landing area. From 1,200 feet to 1,500 feet, you might have an alternative landing area. Okay, at about 1,500 feet, I'm working my way back toward the airport on a left downwind for runway 18. 
So at this point, I'm basically running out of time. I'm a little bit low as I approach TSA on left downwind. So what are my options? What could I do? Well, maybe one would be an abbreviated pattern. An abbreviated pattern simply means I might do a downwind, a base, and a final. It may not be all exact, but the objective is I will land back to the airport safely. It's all part of your training. So now I'm thinking, well, my abbreviated pattern is probably not an option at this point. So what's next? Well, that's easy. I'm going to land downwind and make that runway safely. Part of your training is downwind landings, so it's really not that big of a deal. It might seem like it, but after a while, you'll get comfortable with it. Landing downwind means I'm going to have a higher ground speed on touchdown. Again, it's just part of your training. I've got full spoilers activated. We've got a long runway here. It's over 3,000 feet, so it's not a problem. And for additional safety, I decided to land in the grass and not down that runway. This will give me more additional drag to slow down much faster than landing on that asphalt runway. After touchdown, we're going to continue to fly the airplane. I'm holding full up elevator, keeping those wings level as long as I can. Stop. And that's all there is to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And check out my other flying glider videos on YouTube. Our glider club is about a mile south of Dallas, Texas, in Midlothian, Texas. If you want more information, just look up texassoaring.org for more information on our glider club. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.